This project is going to focus on making a simple model in a 3D modeling program called Rhinoceros. There's many of options out there, but this is one that I've used over a long period of time, and I like it a lot, and I think you will too. And you can see here that I'm looking at this link for the infamous rubber duck tutorial. So when you're starting out in graphic modeling programs, often you've got the flashlight tutorial, which um, takes a known familiar object that's rendered entirely in geometric forms. And you've also got the rubber duck tutorial so you can get into organic forms. So we're going to go right into the rubber duck tutorial and we're going to do it a little bit differently because we're making a model whose output will be in a, um, uh, in a 3D printing environment and eventually we will replace it with metal through mold making. Therefore we don't care as much about some of the stuff you see on the screen in terms of part of the duck being yellow with an orange beak and so forth. So, so we don't care about the colors that are rendered on the surface, we're just interested in making a completely solid model. So if I switch over to Rhino here, if you want to use Rhino at school, you'll want to boot into the Windows partition of our lab computers. It's also possible to download uh, demo versions, and they make a Mac version too. So I'm using an old Mac version back when it was still a beta, before it had been released officially, and I was part of the beta testing program. So we, we're going to get something like this, and you can see with this particular duck, it is all gray. We don't really care about associating colors. So we'll be uh, following portions of this tutorial and leaving other portions behind. So back over in Rhino, if I open up a new file, you can really make it any scale that you want. So often it'll prompt you to say, should this be an inch file or millimeters or meters or feet or whatever. Uh, work in whatever unit of measure that you prefer. I also recommend you work with a three-button mouse, so if I scroll in and out, that's going to zoom in and zoom out in the uh, workspace. If I hold down the right mouse button and move my mouse around in the perspective view, I'm going to rotate it. So you can see here, this is called the perspective view. If I double-click there, and this is how your screen will likely start out, we actually have four different views or viewports, so perspective, top, front, and right. If you ever can't see something in that view, you can zoom out with the mouse wheel and then back in again. Or you can click on a particular viewport and uh, hit this little command here, zoom extents, and that's going to zoom in the window so that it um, contains all of the geometry that can be found in that particular file. So hold down the right mouse button to rotate the view uh, in perspective, zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, and then if I hold down the left mouse button, that's going to let me uh, make selection boxes. So you can see if I drag from the right to the left hand side, my selection box only needs to touch the object to be selected. Whereas if I drag from left to right, I need to fully contain the geometry to be selected. So that's the left mouse button and the right mouse button, at least in perspective. If I drag the right mouse button in any other view, I will get the pan Right, so that just moves me around in two dimensions, but not three. So this is full rotation of three axes, as you can see expressed right here. Each of these other viewports is a simplification of the 3D space and only gives me, say, Y and X, Z and X, or Z and Y. And therefore, I don't rotate uh, while holding the right mouse button in these views because that would turn these views into a perspectival view. Okay, so that's a very, very simple overview of how this uh, interface is going to look. So let's start a new file, and then we will build this thing together.